Okay, hello everybody. This is uh, theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's exclusive coverage of the Splunk Conference. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host this day, next two days, Dave Vellante for wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the Splunk Conference. Hashtag Splunk Conference. Dave. Back well, in Vegas, John. Back <laughs> in Vegas. Um, we're on a tear. We, got a, we're up to, we may do 35 CUBE events this year and uh, what an, what an exciting opportunity to be on the crowd and talking to the most amazing companies and thought leaders and people making all this happen. We are living in probably one of those explosive uh, inflection points in the, t in the technology history. Since the computer revolution and the PC, we're seeing things like big data, converged infrastructure, um, up and down the stack, the mobile apps, cloud mobile and social. We're doing a crowd chat while we're here inside theCUBE about Hadoop World coming up and also talking about Splunk. We are living in a really, really interesting time, Dave, and Splunk is here to celebrate their massive success and exploding opportunity to move from a company that started over almost 10 years ago as machine data log files to essentially changing the game on business using the cloud, mobile and social, pretty impressive. Um, we're here for two days live coverage in Las Vegas. This is the Splunk conference. We're going to talk to a lot of the folks and they had their keynote this morning. So David, I got to ask you, you were inside the keynote. What's your takeaway? Give us a little uh, taste and color of what happened in the keynote and what's some of the takeaways. Well John, of course, this is our second year at the Splunk.com. Uh, the hashtag here, of course, is pound Splunk comp. And theCUBE was uh, privileged enough to be here last year. Uh, you and I are doing the show this year. We got a full team here. Uh, since we we were at .conf last year, John Splunk went public. Uh, they are smoking hot. They're a, I've predicted they'll be a three hundred million dollar company this fiscal year. Wall Street's got them a little less. You know, they're guiding the street at around two seventy five, two eighty. But I think they'll hit three hundred. They're growing at fifty percent per year. They're they've got a six point four billion dollar market cap. They got three hundred million dollars in cash, and as they say, they recently went public. So they're doing very very well. To me, John, before I uh, answer your question, this company reminds me a lot of Workday, Salesforce, ServiceNow, and Tableau. Not in terms of what they do, but why they do it. The spirit of these companies. They are in the business, they have passionate customers, they're solving new problems, they're growing like crazy. They are the hot new kids on the block. So this morning we heard Gottfried Sullivan, who's the CEO, chairman, and president of Splunk, sort of lay out their progress uh, and tee up the capabilities and the products that really Splunk is all about. As you mentioned, Splunk is all about taking machine data and log data and making sense out of it. So it started as a company to help people do troubleshooting. A lot of use cases certainly within IT, uh, within telco, helping solve network problems. Increasingly they're moving toward monitoring and alerting and then really now going more toward real-time analytics. So here's a company again, like Tableau, like uh, ServiceNow, that started with a foothold, with a very narrow use case, is now expanding with other applications, really in the backs of very passionate customers. Yeah, Dave, one of the things that was impressive to me on the keynote, and also here at the show, was the vibe and the excitement. It's relatively a small show, but it's growing like crazy, and what's different is that they have an ecosystem partnership model now that is exploding. If you look on the floor here, you can't see it, but I will tell you that the picture here looks really amazing. You have big name sponsors here, Arista Networks, Palo Alto Networks, Microsoft, tons of companies in the ecosystem. The ecosystem partners here are absolutely supporting Splunk. Splunk on their side of the, on their side of the table is doing extremely well in customer acquisition. They have proven the value proposition that big data analytics, specifically machine data, is really, really at the center of what most businesses are starting to get their arms around. So, you know, you got machine to machine data, as we say, data exhaust. This is a key value proposition for clients and, and their customers. So you got Splunk running the table on the corporate side, on the company side, their acquisition of new sales, they're adding more people. On the ecosystem side, Dave, very impressive set of, of partners here showing their support and really excited for what Splunk brings to the table. Well, I think that's key, John. Well, Splunk has 6,000 customers, about 40% of the Fortune 500. Uh, to me, the ecosystem is really critical. Last quarter, Splunk told us that about 45% of its sales went through the channel. I think that number is going to explode over the next five years. I've, I've predicted that it's going to be upwards of, of, of 60 to 70%. And the reason I feel that way, John, is because the direct sales model doesn't scale the way it used to. Uh, and uh, Splunk has a combination of inside sales and 
and, and outside salespeople, and I think that the ecosystem and the channel, that's really how Splunk is going to be able to take its horizontal platform and attack vertical markets. That to me is a key capability that, that Splunk will tap and has to tap in order for it to uh, continue to grow. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about is, a lot of people say, why Splunk? We travel all over the world, we hear people talk about Splunk all the time, say the competitors say we have the Splunk killer, oh we can do that too. What practitioners tell us, John, is that Splunk does very well with complex, multi-structured data. Um, we're coming from a lot of different data sources. If you got a single data source, like a refrigerator throwing off data, you know, maybe Splunk's not the best platform. It's really where there's a lot of complexity and a lot of diversity where Splunk shines. So you're seeing them a lot in financial services, you see them a lot in telco, a lot of security applications, uh, online travel systems, uh, and the like. And really, moving from a one product company to really a multi-product company with its platform, John. You know, Dave, we've been talking about the job growth I think the marketplace. Gardner predicts that you know, four million new jobs are going to be created. Um, I want to ask you a question. Do you think that Splunk represents a new job opportunity or do you see them shifting from the IT practitioner moving into more of the data science role or both? Is it a hybrid? What's your take on that? Well, Splunk, like a number of the companies that we follow, John, are going after the holy grail of big data. And what I mean by that is they're trying to make big data really simple for not just data scientists, not just IT people who can read log files, not just data analysts and power users, but for the masses. And that to me is the big opportunity here, John. The, the old line decision support companies, the old BI companies, failed to deliver on that vision even though they've promised it for decades. On the other vector, you've got Excel. And Excel just doesn't cut it for a lot of, of applications. It just doesn't have the, the power and the simplicity. So, Companies like Splunk uh, and Tableau, I mentioned ServiceNow before, they're going after the line of business user. To the extent that they can tap that, the market opportunity is enormous. And that's really where I see, John, the big opportunity. So Dave, I got to ask you about some of the real-time search capabilities. You're seeing Splunk being used for analytics. Can you elaborate on some of the demos and hackathons that they did on stage? Yeah, so basically what we saw today was, was Splunk overlaid on top of Hadoop clusters, for example, uh, we saw some demos where we, we saw uh, a, a very diverse data set and very fast ability to, to search what happened when with some diversity uh, and being able to cut the data in a variety of different ways. We had the chief strategy officer who used to run development up against the, the, uh, one of the lead product managers uh, and, and the product manager was consistently outperforming in terms of her searches, uh, the, the, the uh, chief strategy officer doing searches in you know, really a matter of seconds, relatively complex searches. And so, now, there are some open source uh, uh, projects going on out there, Elasticsearch is one, uh, Logstash is another one that's come up. Uh, these are companies that are laying search on top of Lucene. Lucene is something I know, John, you're very familiar with. We've talked about it a lot here in theCUBE. So there's open source activity. It's going to be very interesting to see how Splunk opens up. My prediction is they will continue to open up. They're an open platform with open APIs, and you know, they like the open source mojo. One of the things um, that's really impressive about Splunk is, again, they've moved a 10-year journey. They went public. Now they're a public company. Um, People are excited, Dave, generally here, and, and the thing that I get excited about is when you see entrepreneurs go to the next level, you get venture capitals, August Capital, and uh, puts the original capital in uh, Seven Rosen Funds. Really, really great opportunity. They absolutely had a great run, great successful entrepreneurial venture. Uh, this is the Splunk Conference. We're here for two full days. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We're going to put our next guest up after this short break. We'll be right back. Keep watching wall-to-wall -wall coverage for two days. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE, Wiki Bonds, exclusive coverage of Splunk Conference 2013, .conference2013. Be right back. Cube is a live mobile studio. When you bring it to events and we say we extract the signal from the noise, what we do is we get the absolute best guests that are at those events, we bring them inside the Cube, and we talk to them, we have a conversation. We really want to make it fun, exciting, but more importantly, extract the data from the guests and extract that metadata and share it with the world so people can use that information to better themselves, better their companies, more importantly, connect with other people to do more business, to define more about the technology, 
and for us, this is the future. Uh, I watch many of the uh, the Cube interviews when you're handling other events. Oh, good. And uh, you know, it's both the combination of enjoyable and insightful. And it, you know, what I like is the uh, interactive banter back and forth, plus the fact that uh, you know, when I think about some of the conversations we have, they're not only deep, they're not only rich, but the audience themselves will really come to benefit from those conversations. When organizations bring the Cube to an event, it just brings a whole new dimension. It adds a texture of not only independence, but also explodes content from their community into a much, much broader community. We tend to reach about 10 times the audience that's live at an event. So we're a big data-driven organization. Um, we have a data science team that allows us to see not only what's uh, trending broadly uh, with the public, but what's tre trending in very specific areas in our specialty in tech. That allows us to vector our analysis and, and relevance uh, from our research and journalist team into everything that we do as a media company. And really the benefit of theCUBE is a place for conversations for people to connect with each other and, and to learn about things. And uh, it's a revolution in, in media. We look at the technology and the people behind it as tech athletes, those are the folks making companies, making the technology, really creating the new value in this modern era, and it's fun, it's exciting, and more importantly, it's very social. The Cube does an excellent job of taking a very, very, this very, very broad platform and format and giving visibility to a very broad audience on each of the different uh, key aspects of the technology, and it's a, it's a great environment for the, the broader community who couldn't be here today have visibility into what we're doing, what each of the tracks are, and what are the sort of the core trends that are associated inside of Hadoop and given a very balanced view from multiple dimensions around it. I think that's invaluable for the community. And you always know that your view is right until you hear a different perspective. So you're always interested in give me some neutral perspective, help me see it from a different uh, light, right? And maybe ask a hard question or two that I might not have considered. And, you know, in that sense, right, that independent right, uh, uh, voice, that uh, always ability to, right, have, uh, you know, sort of in independent, audited sort of perspective, right, of the world, it's always just good. So these guys bring an incredible uh, wealth of knowledge from their own careers. They've been into a lot of different things in the industry. And uh, they're independent.